hello and welcome back to my channel uh here you see me laying in some yellow uh, on the stem here and that's just because later on i'm going to be coming in with some green and going over top of it and i want to give it a little bit of a yellow tint you see me spraying yellow with the flower here and then i will be coming back in later and going over that some um, i'm using a handheld uh, shield here to block out that wing and a little bit of the background color there that i had um, mixed up on and sprayed or didn't get enough color in there so i kind of had to spray in some more yellow in behind the bird um, just a process of layering color um, you know I'm using my Creos Pro Boy 771 and it's a really good airbrush I like it very well it's I have numerous airbrushes but I kind of stick to a few I have the one where I lay it has a three millimeter needle and then I have a one with uh, uh, 05 and, excuse me I'm burning the candle <laughs> hope you're having a good day today it sure is beautiful outside not too hot today where I'm at in Indiana but uh Man, have we had some hot weather. Whew. You know, when I finish this piece, I really liked I really like it and I I'm going to be clear coating it with automotive clear, but I'm going to be doing another piece before I I clear so I can do them together. Um usually I like to wait to clear my artwork work until I have, you know, a couple two or three pieces before I uh, break out the gun to to clear it and you know a lot of times sometimes I want to clear with resin and other times it's just easier just to use automotive clear they're both kind of similar but I think resin gives it a more I don't know like a sunken in look but um, um, automotive clear does just about as good uh, as when I'm done, I usually try to spray um, a clear over it just to protect it until I can spray uh, the final clear on it. Just something to give it a little bit of protection against scratches and things like that. Because it's easy to scratch composition panels when you're using illustration colors. That's why a lot of us use different tools to scratch out highlights and things on our artwork because it is easy. Um, and when you're doing portraits and things, you, you get all kinds of textures that way. So it's, uh, you know, it's a process of doing it, but um, you can get a really realistic look when you use different kinds of tools like this. Isn't God's creation just beautiful? I love hummingbirds and flowers, and I love to paint animals and just all kinds of things like that. I like to do portraits too, but my favorite is animals, dogs, cats, birds. Cabins with landscapes and water. Oh, water. That is such my pain I have never really got the hang of doing an ocean or something like that where it's got waves um, hand painting it I can do good but when it comes to airbrushing that's a totally different story so that's my one area if I need help on is water
I know a lot of people say, oh, mine's hands. I can't do hands. I can't do lips. I can't do eyes. But I, no, I can pretty well. Now, now fingers tend to give me uh, trouble once in a while, especially if they're angled a, diff uh, a certain way. But usually if you draw it like a little tube shape and then connect the connect them you can get kind of the shape you're wanting and always use a reference photo which this picture here I am sorry to say that I lost my reference photo so this flower isn't exactly what the flower is on the site I just kind of was using my own memory of what it was and was putting in things here and there so if you say hey that no that's not what my flower looks like well you're right it's not what the flower looks like <laughs> i could have printed it off but i just went with my artistic ability and just kind of did my own thing and it's okay to do that you don't always have to paint something exactly like the picture you can add your own artistic ability in there and create something different just like the bird i think here that's in that photo it's not the same bird at all it, this bird's wings are stretched out more like a a cross shape and i did that on purpose this is a fiber um tool it's like a pencil a fiber pencil you can get them on Amazon. I've got a black one, a red one. The red one's a little bit finer than the black one. Um, but it, it's really good for scratching out feathers. And here you can see me coming back in with that Mars. It's not a Mars, it's a sand eraser. I'm trying to get some of those highlights out of that yellow because I'm realizing that it had dried and cured a little bit too much and it's a little bit harder to, to erase out so i'm trying different different things to get it out of there uh, you'll see me coming back in later with a smaller dowel angled at a different area a different way to try to get get some of those brighter highlights in there out but uh, i finally gave up and went to white and just uh, airbrushed white over it here you see me coming in with moss green it's one of my favorite greens and I'm just laying in that stem and I'm laying in some leaves in the background I'm putting some vining in it and moss green it's just going to let that flower stand out from the background there and I'm spraying on this shield, not so much the bottom of that stem. You always want to kind of angle your airbrush to where it's like hitting on the, the shield, the plastic. And then your overspray will go over on that stem. It gives it more of a subtle look instead of such a drastic sharp Here's the small dowel I was talking about. You're going to see me make a sign with my hands here in a little bit because I'm just really aggravated at myself at this point because I took a break and the break was too long and I let all this yellow that I sprayed on there cure. So it was more difficult for me to scratch out the highlights and um, I was really frustrated with myself. And so here I'm just trying to scratch out some highlights so I can come back in with some white and uh, uh, fade it out. <laughs> there, there was the gesture. I was like, ah, I'm so mad at myself. But, you know, it's all part of art. We make mistakes. We learn from them. We come back in and fix them. There's nothing you cannot fix. Everything can be fixed just have to start try it again do better i think after a period of time i finally give up and start spraying the white
I was trying to get rid of most of the uh, dust from scratching. But here I'm coming back in. I think I have white in my brush and I'm, or I'm using the left of my green that I have, yes. And I'm putting in some darker highlights there in the bird. Um, because he does have some shading. And that moss green is such a beautiful color. So I'm just kind of doing my own thing here. Kind of adding in a little bit of darker places around um, in the background there. Make it pop a little bit. I think there's kind of a little bit of a glare on this panel too from the light. Because um, it's skewed a little bit. So you could get an angle where I was painting. And I'm probably at this point cleaning out my airbrush and putting white in it I believe. Yeah, or pink, I, I don't know, I can't remember now. No, oh, it's white, I think. I wish there was more people around that would want to get interested in airbrushing. Everybody's so afraid of that airbrush, but it's really a fantastic little tool and I just don't have anybody else around that does the same thing I love to do. Not close to me, anyway. Hey, if there's anybody out there close to Wabash, Indiana, give me a holler. That likes to airbrush, anyway. I got plenty of airbrush friends, but they live so far away. <laughs> It's my doggy in the background. You'll always hear my doggy. He's with me all the time. I'm angling my airbrush so I can get some sharp highlights. Um, you'll see me angle it up, down, sideways, whatever. Because I am I learned to do that to keep from using so many stencils. Um, because or taping it's just time consuming but if you're really doing um, a realistic piece you should use tape and stencils there that flower leaf looks like it's popping out there a little bit better now it's a little bit more rounded. And yes, I am airbrushing over the bird's beak. I'm doing that on purpose so it doesn't get that block look. Because later on, I'm going to come back in with a fine liner brush. And I'm just going to line that beak of the um, hummingbird with a liner. Putting in some little dots there. Now you see me angling down because um, I'm spraying down from the tip of that uh, flower leaf there so as not to the white would go out into the background. I 
I'm putting a, a few little white dots in the background. You, I don't know. I don't think the camera is really picking it up to where you can see it. But um, you know how sometimes the light just shines through uh, the trees and you'll see just little white, like really, well, to me, it looks like diamonds, kind of just little white specks. But uh, if you're looking up at trees and the sunlight's coming through it. Here, I'm starting with the other leaf. It's cut off a little bit. I apologize. I didn't realize the camera was cutting it off. This is all Cretex illustration colors. And I do believe um, I did use a little bit of Wicked um, Neon Pink uh, in, the, in one of those leaves. I can't remember which one, but a couple of them, I believe. This kind of gives it a different shade. changing out my color here and um, I'm going to be coming back in and filling in the bottom of the, the uh, bulb pretty soon here and making it a darker color it really makes it pop out That's a lighter pink. Yeah, I'm putting some magenta in there, I believe. wasn't real happy with the way I did this and uh, after I did it I was like okay that didn't, doesn't quite look right um, and again I was really missing my color well but usually I don't have this hard of a time but I did today on this flower I haven't done a flower in a long time and that's probably why is flowers they're not just one color they're 
all different kinds of shades and um, with my colors it's just wanting to know which one's gonna match best with with the color of the flower that I'm doing so it was a process here's the liner where I'm coming back in and just lining that beacon that was the easiest for me because um, if I would have tried to do that with the airbrush I don't think I could have did it without um, without uh, being shaky I could have used a shield but I wouldn't have got the dark look and then there would have been overspray and it would have took too much time to just tape it off so for me a liner brush works just as well sometimes you do want those things to look sharp My dog jumped up on the bed all of a sudden and wants some loving. His name's Barney, by the way. And he is a brown and white caucus spring, is what I call him, but he's, his, his real name's a Sprocker. They call him Sprockers. They're half English Spaniel and half Springer. So, he's got big brown freckles. Shouldn't have did that. Boo boo. I shouldn't have done that. Don't repeat that. So now I'm coming back in and making this bottom bulb pop out with some dark highlights. And I'm spraying fuchsia first. Magenta, sorry. Blech. It's been a long day. And it looks striking at first, but uh, once I come back over it again and spray the um, a little white on it, it it uh, fades it out enough to where it's not like, oh my God, look at that color, it's the right color. Well, you know, it happens. <laughs> like I said, everything can be fixed. This takes a little bit more work. I kept trying to work with this to get the right shade and it just wasn't working for me. And I was like, oh, I could have just ran home and got my color wheel, but I didn't. I had actually uh, blown out some specks out of the airbrush because I didn't pick it off properly. So when I went to press on the air again, it's um, it blew out some specks, so I had to take the dowel and just kind of take those off. And if you let it dry, it's easy to do. But if you try to do it right away, uh, you'll make a mess. Now, here I think I'm going to be coming in either with some light pink to, hot, to put a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of a highlight. And then I'll be coming in with some dark color, sepia, to at the very bottom of that bulb to make it darker. And there you go. And it just kind of makes it stand out. There we go. It's looking a little better now. Get rid of a lot of that purplish, bluish tint.
I'm using a shield for this a little bit of dark in there because there's no way and here's the finished piece thank you for watching subscribe share